Hey everyone, it's Elisa. I have a step one or step two question for you. It is a statistics question, uh, which will pop up on both exams. Go ahead and pause the video here, do this question on your own, and then come back and we'll do it together. So I'll get started. An investigator has recently conducted a randomized control trial in which a novel anesthesia maintenance agent was found to result in shorter emergence and less post-anesthesia drowsiness than the traditional drugs. A number of participants who administered the medication reported that they had experienced significant nausea from the medication and rated it as mild, moderate, or severe. Which of the following statistical analyses would be best used to interpret the data in the table below? And then the table shows you a treatment group and a control group, and we're divided into mild nausea, moderate nausea, or severe nausea. And your options are ANOVA, which is analysis of variance, a paired t-test, unpaired t-test, multiple linear regression, multiple logistic regression, a chi-square test, and a Pearson correlation coefficient. That is a lot of options. So let's analyze this question. We know that you have two groups. You have a treatment group and a control group. Um, but, and you also have three outcomes. You have mild, moderate, and severe nausea, but those are categorical outcomes. And now it's your key word here. They're categorical outcomes. Um, I've had so many questions on my exams that have given me these slew of options and I had to pay, I essentially I had to choose uh, something like, a, classically it was an ANOVA t-test or a chi-square test, but once or twice the answer was a Pearson correlation coefficient. Um, and I just think these questions are terrifying, so helping them, helping you guys work through them um, will be helpful for you in the future. So let's start with ANOVA, that's analysis of variance. Um, these Tests are used to compare the difference between the means between continuous outcome variables of three or more groups. Um, however, there's only two sample groups here, a treatment and a control, so the ANOVA is not the appropriate test. Um, a paired t-test is used to compare the means of a continuous outcome variable of one group at two points of time. Um, here, we're comparing the proportions of categorical groups. That's another thing that the ANOVA doesn't have. It's not categorical. Um, here, we're comparing categorical outcome variables, uh, so nausea level, among two groups, treatment versus control. So that's not one group at two points of time. That's two different groups. So a paired t-test doesn't work. Um, However, if it was something like the investigators comparing serum glucose levels, which is continuous at baseline and after anesthesia emergence in one group of patients, that could be a paired t-test. An unpaired t-test, which is the classic t-test, compares continuous outcome variable means of two different groups. So, uh, although here we have two different groups, here we have categorical variables and not continuous variables, so we can't use an unpaired t-test. Um, and then multiple linear regression, you're looking at the relationship between more than two continuous or categorical variables, so that's already an option that we could use. Um, and then a continuous outcome uh, variable which is then modeled on a line of best fit. So because different levels of nausea do not constitute continuous data, um, we can't really use a multiple linear regression. A multiple logistic regression um, is the relationship between two or more continuous or categorical variables so like treatment or control group, which we have, and then a categorical outcome variable. So nausea, um, which is modeled with a line of best fit, similar to above. However, multiple regression is reserved for models with two or more independent variables. So for example, the patient had nausea and vomiting and we were looking to um, compare those. So this could, for example, be um, used if we had age, drug dosage, total anesthesia, and, I'm, and 
anesthesia time, and then we compared it on nodule level. In a chi-squared test, we are comparing two categorical variables, great, regardless of the number of subgroups. Um, and then, so the categorical variable here is nausea. And then um, the chi-square test identifies whether the observations differ significantly from what would be expected, and it essentially tests for significance. So that's kind of what we're looking for. So we're comparing more than two categorical variables, which is our levels of nausea. So that's, a, that's, a, that's our best bet so far. And then the Pearson correlation coefficient, um, it describes the strength and polarity of a linear relationship between two continuous variables. Um, is there no correlation? Is there a positive correlation or is there a negative correlation? Um, and because the variables in this scenario are categorical, not continuous, we can't really use this. So our best bet is the chi-square test. And then a classic way to remember that for step is chi for categorical, categorical, categorical. Uh, I think it's in first aid, it's a little mnemonic. Um, so important takeaway points from this is know what a categorical versus a continuous variable is. So um, you know, if they give you a set of means and a lot of numbers, that's not categorical. Categorical is something like, is there nausea or is there not nausea? Or what are the levels of nausea? Um, and then knowing how many things you're comparing. So um, are you comparing categorical variables? Then you want chi-square test. Are you comparing um, more than three continuous variables? Then you want ANOVA, a pair T test, or an unpair T test. Um, you know, how many groups are there? How many points of time are there? So those are all things you want to know. Um, yeah, and then knowing these will just help you not get confused um, when you're taking your exam. So thank you for doing this question with me, and we'll see you next week.